I know why no one is buying your handmade products and I want to help you fix it. My name is Laser Lady and I have been successfully selling my handmade laser cut jewelry online for 10 years. In the last two years, I've sold over 17,000 units on Amazon Handmade and on the lifetime of my Etsy shop, I have over 22 thousand sales. I also have a website, but let's just stop with the numbers. I'm here to tell you, I might know why your products aren't selling. I'm sorry in advance if any of these hurt your feelings. I'm just here to give you the brutal, honest truth like your best friend probably never would because they love you. And I want you to move forward in your business journey. These are things I wish people told me. And I'm going to also give you some really actionable tips so we can improve these products and improve the way that you're selling so you can actually make some money. So let's just dive right into it. You don't know who you're selling to. Now I make jewelry with my laser for eccentric people, you could say. And even though that is pretty broad, I did niche down quite a bit from where I started, which was just making anything I could with my laser. I'm going to make this point quick because if you have ever researched how to sell products, you have already been told that you need to know who your target customer is. Now you might think you know who your target customer is and when I started out, I thought I knew too, but it turns out I was completely wrong. So let's just go over this example and we can make sure. Let's use this funny candle I got my dad as an example. So the first thing we need to figure out when we're making a product is the what. In this case, it's a candle. You probably already know the what of what you are selling, but now we need to know the why. Why are we selling this product? For this candle in particular, it's for gifts. This is a gifting candle. This isn't something you would get yourself. It's something you would give to somebody else. And the third one is super important and what would have changed probably the first three years of me trying to sell things. And that is who, who are you selling this to? In the case of this candle, you are selling this to daughters who are giving this to their dad, probably with a sense of humor. Now you get a bunch of bonus points if you can answer this last question. What problem does it solve? Now, obviously this candle isn't like solving a major life crisis, but for me, this candle solved my need to get a gift that was personal for my dad who has everything. I do have a worksheet that's going to cover all of this, but more on that later. If you have ever found yourself like, whoops, I never really thought about the what and why and who and all of that, then that is probably why you ended up making a product for no one. Now, don't beat yourself up over it. We've all been there. We just need to kind of shift your perspective. Imagine this. You get invited to your workplace potluck, which is awesome because you love food and you love making muffins. You think this is my chance to showcase my silken tofu, blueberry and kale muffins with sweet vanilla hummus frosting. You could eat one of those every single day. Your sister even says they're surprisingly good. So you know this is your chance. You're going to make your mark with your weird and super healthy muffins. And you just know these are going to be the talk of the potluck. And you go have fun and you converse with your friends and your coworkers and the event is over and it's time to collect your probably licked clean plate and return home to make even more of these delicious muffins for you to enjoy day after day. And you notice that maybe one or two muffins were taken and everything else is still there. You still have 10 muffins completely untouched. All of the brownies next to it are gone. All of the boring mac and cheese next to it gone. Everything's gone. The chili's gone. Everybody's taking empty bowls and plates home except for you and your weird ass muffins. Now let me give you a real world example where this happened to me, except it wasn't muffins. It was earrings. <laughs> Now here are some earrings I made that say cats and books and plants. And those are three of my very favorite things. And I know there's other people out in the world that likes those three things, of course. So I showed these to my people on the internet and in real life. And everyone's like, oh yeah, those are super cute. And by time it got to the launch of the product, 
I was like, okay, they're ready to buy. Let's all buy it. And nobody bought it. And it can be just so hard when you have people in your life saying like, oh, I really like that. That's a cool thing. Those muffins are really good. Those earrings are so cute. You're just so good at break dancing. Wow. The thing is, <laughs> the workplace isn't a great place for those weird muffins. My crowd wasn't a good place for these earrings. That design might not even be great for earrings. In general, it might be a better bookmark or a plant steak because of the context of what it is. So to fix this, we just need to do a little bit of research. In the muffins example, what that person could have done is maybe instead of making your favorite type of muffins, you have to think, what are the muffins that everybody else would like? What's kind of a more broad genre of muffins? You can Google what are the best muffins for a potluck, and maybe you'll find a recipe that has been tried and tested and is proven to work that these dark chocolate macadamia muffins are absolutely delicious and they will that they will lick the plate clean by the end of the potluck. Like someone might even eat your plate. They are that delicious. And when you are lucky enough to be surrounded by people who support you and love what you do, it can be really hard to realize this next one. You are just not there yet. You're in my spot. I'm just gonna sit here. This one's really hard to hear, but to be brutally honest, your product might not be selling because it's just not quite good enough to sell yet. And what I mean by that is you are absolutely on the right track. You just need maybe a little bit more experience and refining and polishing around the edges for this particular piece. And I know that's hard to hear. I don't mean to hurt your feelings. It just sometimes somebody needs to say it and you need to look at your products with a very objective eye get outside of yourself don't ask all these people who love you that are just going to tell you you're doing great and think is this something that i would buy is that something you would see in a store is it ready to go essentially let me give you a really good example here is an adorable piece of art that my son did in grade school and I'm sure you know what I told him. That's right, what's going on here? Is this a space cat? And it, how would you know? It's the same color as the background. Is this a table or the floor? I have no idea what's going on here. There's a lot of work to do on this. No, obviously I told my son that this is a very creative piece of art and it's beautiful and I wish it was on a t-shirt so I can wear it around every day for the rest of my life. That's what I told him and that's not the truth. If my kid was like, I'm the next Picasso, that's my, my one piece that's going to define me as an artist. That's insane. Just to be brutally honest. He is an amazing artist now that he's older, but there's always still a little bit more work to do. So if you don't have someone in your life who can be objective and say, that's kind of a weird color scheme, or I'm thinking that's too big, can we do this? Just giving you some critical, constructive feedback, then you need to be the person to do it. So ask yourself these questions. The first question you should ask yourself is what would someone not like about this? If it was sold online, what would be a bad review they could leave? Is it too big or too heavy? Another question to ask is what would make this better? Maybe it needs more chain or more color or less detail. And the best question to ask is why would someone buy this? And hopefully it would be to answer that bonus question because I need this to solve this problem. This one is surprisingly overlooked, but maybe no one knows you sell anything. So I researched this whole how to make money with your business thing like every single day. And I was watching another YouTube video about how to make sales. And this lady was promising sales today. Like if you do this one secret, you will make a sale today. And that secret was simply just go on your Facebook and say, hey, I've got this thing, buy it. And there were so many comments where people were just like, wow, I went on Facebook and I told everybody that I have this thing and someone bought it. I made a sale that day. I get it can be hard feeling like you're hassling people all the time because you won't just shut up about your products and how you sell products. And here's these cool handmade things that you make and you want people to buy your products. But here 
is a real world example of multi-billion dollar companies and them doing this because it works. Think of the holidays. You know how sick you get of hearing about Macy's holiday sale and the Target holiday sale and all the savings at Walmart. You know all these stores exist. You know they're going to have holiday sales. Why even bother telling everybody? And it's because it works. They don't know when they're going to catch you in the frame of mind of, I really need to buy some presents. I'm in the mood for shopping. They're hoping they get you in that moment with their, come to Target, we have all these things on sale. Ornaments are only a dollar or whatever. And then you'll be like, you know what? I think I will go to Target. And that's the same thing everybody else selling anything at any time is doing. They are just hoping to catch you in that right moment when you are ready to buy something or you have a need that you can fulfill with your product and they're going to see you and it's just gonna be perfect. Like fireworks, romance, kismet type situation where they get the thing they need and you get the money you want. It's kind of perfect. It can be super stressful though. Where do you tell people? What social media platforms do you use? And that is a topic that you can explore for days on end, especially here on YouTube. That's where I like to learn. But what I recommend is you pick your two favorite platforms that you're already on. I even tell people that I just mean out in the world when I'm ringing up at Target and someone who's checking me out is like, oh, I like your earrings. I'll be like, oh, did you know I actually make them? If you are ever in the need for them, here's my card. Even though that's kind of old school and whatever, it's actually worked before I've made sales that way. So don't be afraid to kind of just be a little bit more vocal about what it is that you make. Okay, if you thought the last few were maybe a little bit hard to hear or hurt your feelings in some cases, I'm sorry. Uh, this next one is definitely not going to make you feel any better, but it is a hard truth that you may need to come to realize. Your listings suck. My first Etsy listings back in 2014 were a disgrace. Check out this picture and this picture. Oh, carpet and shoes. That's a really great background. This one's not even in focus. I've gotten a lot better over the years. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I've gotten a lot better over the years. So let's just dive right into it. This is going to broadly cover the basics you need for the best listing, no matter where you sell online. Pictures, obviously very important. We need a white or plain background shot. We need to see how it is used, such as a sign on a wall, jewelry on a person, size comparison, holding an object, or perhaps your product is next to a coffee mug or something people know the size of. We need an up close shot, absolutely. And since this is a handmade product, the process of it being made makes wonderful pictures. In packaging is a good picture for people, especially if it is a gift item, and of course, multiple angles. SEO tags and keywords can be really hard, especially for your description, but once we know the what, why, and who, it's gonna be super easy. Starting with the what and those muffins we talked about before, we're talking 12 muffins, chocolate and nut muffins, handmade muffins. So that's great for tags, and we'll use that later for the description. Next, why? These are party muffins, potluck snacks, food gifts. Why are these going to be eaten? And who were feeding these to potluck attendees? And they would make great generic gifts. And people with a sweet tooth would probably love to snack on them. So let's mix and match all of these SEO tags to make a perfect description. I came up with indulge in a dozen heavenly handmade muffins bursting with rich dark chocolate and crunchy macadamia nuts perfect for sharing at parties and potlucks, or as a thoughtful gift for any occasion. Delight your sweet tooth and impress your guests with these irresistible treats. Your title should answer the what, why, and who. One dozen delicious muffins with dark chocolate and macadamia nuts, snacks for gifting, parties, and potlucks. And that will give you your best chance at showing up in the search. All right, to make this super easy on you, I made that PDF, no more teasing, it exists. It looks a little bit like this, and it is going to help you so much on selling these amazing products that you make with your own hands. I'm impressed, and I'm not just saying that because we're pretty good friends by now, am I right? 
but if you would like one of these free PDFs that you can use for every single product that you make, you can find that link down in the description and on the pinned comment below. So do check that out. I wish I had resources like this when I started 10 years ago, especially where to even sell my handmade goods. If you're still in that boat a little bit, you know there are a million different websites out there. And that's why I made this video right here. It'll help you whittle down the best place for you to sell your handmade goods, either online or in person. So check that out and I'll see you over there.